Onosis Root Rot Onosis Root Rot is the most economically significant root disease in Alabama. Caused by a fungus, this disease occurs more often in monoculture pine stands that are intensely managed and thinned. Although all southern pines are susceptible, loblolly and slash are the most affected, while longleaf pine is the least. With most root fungal diseases, they are quite difficult to monitor because the initial damage occurs underground. By the time there are noticeable tree symptoms and physical signs, the disease has manifested in the stand, causing significant damage. As a rule, fungi thrive under relatively warm, moist climates. However, the unique characteristic of anosis root rot is that this particular fungus is most virulent under dry conditions. In essence, it thrives on soil types that are sandy and well-drained, a descriptive site that is considered high hazard. Anosis root rot does exist in clayey wet soils, but so do numerous other fungi. With these other fungi thriving and competing on the site, many outcompete the anosis root rot, making it less effective and therefore preventing it from being harmful to its host tree. Anosis is typically found in pine stands growing on well-drained, deep, sandy soils that were recently thinned. If the fungal spores exist in the soil and litter layer, they will land on these freshly cut stump surfaces. The fungus colonizes in the stump, multiplying significantly, and then spreads into the root system. If the roots from the cut stump intertwine or touch the roots of residual pines, then the fungus will infect the roots of these healthy trees. Anosis root rot will continue to spread from pine to pine by this root graft process. Tree symptoms and physical signs responding to the infection are generally not noticed until two or three years after thinning. It generally takes this long for the disease to progress and for the pines to indicate a problem. In some cases, but not always, yellowish brown and white conchs exist in the litter layer at the base of the infected pine. These conchs, if they exist, can usually be seen from December to March. Infected trees will display thinning chlorotic crowns. Some pines with a significant number of decayed roots will lean or simply fall to the ground. A few will merely turn red and die from the girdling of the fungus at the root collar. Eventually, there will be scattered or sections of dead and dying pines in the stand. By now, underground symptoms are recognized. Sections on the roots affected by onosis will appear white and stringy, with other areas that are resin-soaked and stained. This stained color is usually a cinnamon brown and can be easily identified in the roots. Once mortality begins, three years after thinning, infected pines in the stand will continue to die for the next five to seven years. Eventually, nature follows its normal course and the fungus dissipates in the soil ten years after the thinning. However, in cooler climates, the effects from the disease can last up to 80 years. The method to control anosis root rot is really a preventative procedure. Since the disease is mainly influenced by soil type, soil moisture, and thinning practices, these site characteristics and management activities must be strategically analyzed. To decrease the number of possible thinnings on a high-hazard site, plant pines at a lower density, perhaps 400 to 500 trees per acre. If thinning is a necessary management regime for the pine stand, consider a prescribed burn within a few months before the cutting. This understory burn will kill some of the fungal spores, reducing susceptibility. Timing the thinning can also have a huge impact on the effectiveness of the disease. During the summer months, such as July or August, when the temperatures are quite high, thinning may be implemented. The hot temperatures, just like the prescribed burn, will kill some of the fungal spores. If pines established on a high hazard site are thinned, a fungicide can be immediately applied on the cut stump surfaces. A salt-based fungicide, such as borax or sporax, should be applied on the stump, completely covering the surface within 48 hours of the thinning. Another stump treatment that is relatively new is a biological weapon using the native fungus Pineophora gigantea. This fungus is a known pathogen of anosis, outcompeting it and preventing it from colonizing in the stump. 
If the high hazard site is suitable for a less susceptible pine species, such as longleaf, convert the stand to that particular species. If by any chance the pine stand is infected with the gnosis root rot, document the current status of the residual trees and the progression of the disease. If the pines are saw timber size and only a few are infected, wait a few years before implementing any action. The healthy pines can continue growing until the stand is ready for final harvest. If the majority of the pines in the stand are dying, clear cut the stand, treat the stumps with an approved fungicide, and replant with a preferably less susceptible species, if the site permits. If the pines are rather small, such as pulpwood size, and there are scattered areas in the stand that are affected, salvage the cluster of infected trees along with a buffer. Immediately treat the cut stump surfaces with borax or sporax to prevent residual pines from contracting the disease.